Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com and I have just received my new Electric XP 2.0 folding e-bike so I'm gonna unbox it with you guys and let's check it out. Now I love how they still went with the TV on the box. That's an old move by Van Moof to make shippers think it's a TV and it's more fragile so they treat it better. But this is a giant, let me show you, folding bike box. So obviously this doesn't fit a normal flat screen TV. So they went with an old cathode ray tube TV, which is hilarious. All right, here's my bike, a nice black electric XP 2.0. <laughs> Even the charger has an old outlet on it. That's so funny. All right, Cable Tie City. Now for those that aren't familiar, the Electric XP, it's not an amazing quality bike, but it's a good bike at a great price. That's how I always describe it. Obviously it can't hold a candle to bikes from you know, Yamaha or Trek or any major company like that, but it's not designed to do that. This is an e-bike for people that just want to spend you know, a reasonable amount of money and get a decent performing e-bike. So you know, we're talking 28 mile per hour speeds, a reasonable range, probably 20 miles at a minimum if you're doing throttle at reasonable speeds, longer if you do pedal assist. But all in all, this is just meant to be a bang for your buck type of e-bike. Man, I forgot how heavy these bikes are. Now there are a bunch of new upgrades on the Electric XP 2.0 and I can already see a more robust folding mechanism here. And there's that new paint job. These are also new bars here. Yeah, these new bars are definitely gonna be more comfortable too. I can already tell. Now there are a bunch of upgrades also that are new with Electric XP 2.0 and one is a new seat. So this is the stock seat, which is already pretty nice looking. I mean, it's nicely upholstered and it's pretty cushy as is, but there's a new like luxury seat that I got as well. Let me grab that. And while I'm tossing on upgrades, there's also a suspension seat post that Electric has as well. So let's put both of those on. So here's the old seat, which is already pretty decent. All right, and here's our new suspension seat post. Oh, come on, is it seriously raining? <laughs> You're kidding me. Awesome, all right, welcome to Florida. You know what, we're gonna keep going. All right. Oh man, look at that seat. Now, this is a luxury seat for a luxury tush. Check this thing out. All right, this is dedication to a craft here, guys. You know, I should probably put the charger away though. Don't let anyone say I'm one of those pampered e-bike guys. All right, luxury seat on. And that's about it. Oh wait, there we go. Now that's about it. Got my new nice seat on, the new suspension post, and I'm ready to ride, but I think I'm gonna wait until it dries out a bit, and then we're gonna go test this new bike out. All right, I'm gonna get out of the rain. See you guys soon. <laughs> And I couldn't wait. It just kept raining and I wanted to ride, so I did. And it's not like the bike can't take some water, it's IP65 rated. So you can go splashing around without worrying about shorting out your bike. The fenders are also a big help in the rain, unless you hit some really big puddles, and then you're basically just canoeing it through. So I definitely put the bike through the water test and it did just fine. When it dried up outside, I got the chance to do even more testing. The biggest difference in terms of the feel of the bike compared to the previous version of the Electric XP is probably the combination of the new front suspension fork and the new narrower tires. The tires aren't narrow by any means, they're still pretty wide, but now they're 3 inches wide instead of 4. That's a more reasonable tire size that makes the bike more nimble, but still leaves you with nice fat tires for any type of terrain you want to conquer. And the same goes for that suspension fork. It's a nice addition for riding different types of terrain and just absorbing the occasional pothole in the city. It's also an actual hydraulic suspension fork, not just a simple spring fork, and so it works quite well. The new rear rack is much more robust feeling, and there's also a mounting point up front so you can add a rack or a basket up there. The rear rack actually also has a mounting point for a basket, 
So you can basically turn this thing into a small cargo bike if you want. I don't have the baskets yet, but I'm going to get them and add them to the bike to test out their functionality. They weren't available yet for shipping when I got my bike, and I can't really blame electric e-bikes for that since they've been dealing with crushing demand for these bikes combined with industry-wide supply chain slowdowns. So I know that a lot of people are complaining that they've ordered their bikes and they haven't gotten them yet, and I know how frustrating that can be, but it's just something that the whole industry is going through, and when you've got a company like this that basically makes one bike and everybody wants it, you end up with the whole supply demand thing that's topsy-turvy and a lot of good people end up waiting for their bikes which is unfortunate but just a sign of the e-bike times right now but good things are worth the wait and i am loving this bike so far so i know that if you have one on pre-order you're gonna love it too in the meantime i've been enjoying testing some of the other new features that got added to this model the new bars are wider and they definitely feel nicer to me and this new seat and suspension post feel great too. That's part of the comfort package, so you do have to pay extra to get that wider seat and the new suspension seat post. But that extra $99 is probably worth it if you put in a lot of miles on your bike. If you sometimes get back pain or tailbone pain from long rides, $99 sounds like a cheap price to pay for comfort and pain-free riding. Many people spend that much on a single massage. Speaking of 99 bucks, that's how much the new Electric XP increased its price by. Or actually, I guess it was 100 bucks. It used to be $899, which always sounded like a mistake to me because the price was just so dang low. Now with all the improvements, the bike has seen a price increase to 999, which is still a heck of a deal here. For what you're getting here, which is an e-bike with a 28 mile per hour top speed, 500 watt continuous and 800 watt peak motor, and a 460 watt hour enclosed battery, that's a really fair price. So I gotta hand it to the electric e-bikes team. I mean, they really made a great bike here, and it's not just the upgrades I'm impressed with. I mean, the upgrades are important, and you know, let's face it, the original Electric XP 1.0 is a couple of years old, and it could use some of these upgrades. But the fact that they were able to add in these new components, these new features, and only increase the price by 100 bucks, that's really impressive, especially at a time like this, when e-bike prices are increasing across the board due to all the different pressures on the e-bike industry. So my hat is off to the electric e-bikes team. This is a great bike. It always has been, and now it is even better in the 2.0 form. I will continue to recommend this bike up and down the street every day of the week to pretty much everyone who's looking for a first entry e-bike that doesn't want to spend a bunch but still wants to get some good value and even for someone who's been e-biking for a while but wants a portable smaller e-bike that can still do a lot and doesn't break the bank so still a great option better than ever last but not least it is time to announce the winner of the giveaway from my last video and the randomly selected commenter is john thornburg so congratulations, just let me know which one of my books you'd like. You can choose from DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or my newest book, The Electric Bike Manifesto. And if you guys at home want to win one of my books for free, all you have to do is put a comment down below, and hopefully you will be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. And if you don't want to wait that long for one of my books, you can always find them on Amazon. Alright, thanks for watching everybody, I'll see you here next time.